So in this lesson, we're going to look at data serialization. Data serialization is a process in which data structures or objects are converted into a format that can be easily stored, transmitted, or re reconstructed, right? So this serialized data can be in the form of a byte stream, a string, or any other format for different purposes. So let me explain data serialization in clear uh, with an example, okay? So imagine you have a complex data structure in your mobile app or in a backend application, like a user profile, as you can see, with various attributes such as name, age, email, and also the profile picture. So you want to save this user's data to a file and send it over the internet to store in a database. However, these operations typically work with simpler data formats like strings or binary data and not complex objects as our user object. And even if we send it, uh, the backend will not be able to detect what this user object is. We personally defined it in our mobile application. So the solution to this is what's called data serialization. So data serialization allows us to convert this complex object Object, the user profile into a, into a format that can be easily handled for storage, transmission, and other purposes. So one format that is known is a text-based format like JSON. So in this, you convert the complex uh, object into a text-based format. As you can see, we, can, we still have the attributes name, age, email, and profile picture. And you'll find that JSON or JavaScript object notation is human readable and it's actually widely supported. So another thing to note is data deserialization. So it's just a reverse process of serialization where it takes this serialized data as we have now, the JSON format, and reconstructs it to the original data structure or object. And now that we have an understanding of data serialization, let's head back to our project and implement data serialization. To explain data serialization, we'll design repository classes for our two main entities, which are lists and items. In software development, a repository class is often used as part of the repository pattern, which basically is a design pattern that separates the logic that retrieves data from various sources such as database, web service, or in-memory cache, which we are actually going to use from the rest of the application. So the repository acts as an intermediary between the app's business logic and the data sources, providing a unified interface for data access. So we'll define these um, repository classes in a separate folder. This is possible in Datfrog. So we'll come here on the main root of our project and if call, define create a folder called lib, sorry, um, this is the wrong place, in here, and just create a folder called lib, and inside lib, we're going to define two folders, lists, and another folder, items. So we can start off with lists. So in our lists folder, We'll define uh, our first repository class. So we'll just say new file, list repository, dot dot. Now let's work on our logic. Great. So first things first, um, we're going to use an in-memory cache to store and to read from, read to store data and retrieve from. So what we're going to do first, we're going to define a class, uh, an object, sorry. And this object will be of type map. So it's going to hold a collection of objects, if you remember our data basics. So we're going to give it a um, type of string. And before we do this, we're going to give it a type of string, but we'll also have a generic um type over here which will be a class if you remember we talked about generic types so before we do this let's define our generic type i uh, will call it a task list so it will be a class so let's define that first so we'll call it a task list and inside this task list we're going to define the 
attributes that will constitute in this class so first things first we want to ex uh, we'll come here and define the variable so in our list what we need is an id we'll need to pass an id and then we'll also need to pass the name of the list great so now that we have that there we want to define the constructor remember constructor is a special function that holds the same name as a class name so we're just going to come here and define it task list and say that we require the id and we also require the name required great another thing now we need to handle is now that we have def designed this is a simple class that we have designed we want to add um, a specific class called equitable what equitable is is just a way of determining if two objects of the same type are equal based on their content so you'll find that remember we've said we're going to store our data in an in-memory cache so inside it we want to be able to implement equitable so that if we need to compare two different task lists task list objects inside the in-memory cache it will be much possible with equitable because it will be able to compare the content inside so let's just extend that by installing the package let's just uh, we'll come here just open one of my terminals and save that pub add equitable and there we have it so we'll just come here and say extends equitable and we have it over here and then here it says missing okay it's just missing some documentation let's add the missing let's override the functions that come with it which is this list object get props so what this one does it's 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 a get method that helps us retrieve the value of a variable in this case so we'll override this props uh, props uh, method that comes with the equitable class as you've seen we have to override it and specify which properties that we want to compare between two task lists so we we'll remove this row and just pass in the two variables which is id and name great um the next let's just add this documentation for this to avoid and then we just add const the reason why we're adding const in constructor because basically naturally we don't add a const data type on our constructor it's just because this is an immutable class and immutable classes um, ha have their attributes as final so that means you have to when you implement the const it uh, makes sure that once an object of this class is created its attributes cannot be changed i hope that makes sense so we'll just add that and then another thing will be now to we'll add um lists id and lists name great let's just remove this so basically this is our task list class that holds the properties or the attributes of how our list should what our list should contain 
uh, as you have mentioned what the role of the UK table is is to help us compare between two task list objects and this is just a basic constructor that we've created inside our class we have defined two variables that are important to define a list and this is an overridden function that comes with equitable where you specify what you want to be compared between two task list objects and we've specified ID and name right now back to the top we had mentioned that we're going to define use in memory cache to as our data source mm -hmm. so let's just define it we said we're going to use a map um, data type and then we're going to pass in string and then we'll pass in task list let's call our data source list db and then just initialize it as empty so there we have it and an important factor that we want to add we want to add a specific annotation just to show that this is only for testing purposes remember that when we started we talked about we're going to interact with other types of databases but this is for us to say uh, we want first to create um, design it first within uh, a local um, data source first see how things are working and then now integrating with other databases will be much easier because we'll have understood the concepts in terms of the logic in terms of code how things work so we're just going to add an annotation this annotation is we'll need it at we'll need to define it but first we we'll need to add a specific package for us to do that it's called meta so just say dot pub add meta wait for it to install great then now we can use it over here we can import it package meta meta now let's try and add our annotation visible for testing so basically that's what we do great so now we have our class we have our data source let's just define this as our data source in memory cache and we have our task list class so i want to show you uh, before we create now the functions uh, that we need before we create um, our class repository that will hold the functions our crude operations in short uh, let's implement data serializations because we'll need that when we're creating the repository that will hold all our operations so to do that we'll need to import json serializable um, we're going to add the package json serializable and json annotation so back to our terminal just write that pub add json serializable and then we say dot pub add json annotation we add them so as you can see that the json annotation is dependent on the json serializable but even if you install this alone it will ask you to install this as well so the, as you can see it's here but we need to still pass this so our two packages are installed so now let's uh, add the logic so we'll create three methods um there's from json to json and copy with i'll explain as we go what the role of the methods are and I also have an article on medium that explains that i'll leave the link in the description box below so let's start with the first one which is from json so we have uh what we're going to do we're going to define a factory and call our task list class dot and inject it with a method from json then we're going to say we we want a design of map string dynamic as we mentioned earlier on when talking about that basics we said like the de design of a map 
is almost equivalent to JSON or dictionary in different languages. So we're just designing how we want our since we are using from json we just want to create an object from a json representation so a json will come in then we'll design it from that json and create a task list object i hope it makes sense so um we'll come here and create an arrow function and then we say task list from json So we'll have an error right now, but I'll show you why. We need to use a build runner to, gener to generate this part of the code for us. So this is the one that we're going to, whenever we save our JSON object and we want to get the, we, we, we use that to convert to a task list object. So that's, this is what we refer to as deserialization in short. So from a JSON object to a task list object. Great, and then we're going to have another method, and this method will be to JSON. So we'll just say map string dynamic to JSON and pass task list to JSON. So whatever this is part, whatever this refers to the task list object, when we when we pass the task list object to this um, method, it will convert it into a JSON. So this is now what we call serialization. And lastly, we have copy with. So copy width is just used for updating values much easier within the object instead of picking the whole object and then changing um, uh, picking the whole object and having to change just one attribute it helps you it makes it easier for you to actually change a specific attribute without calling the whole object we'll be able to see how that works so we'll just define it as task list dot copy width So we'll have our string ID and our string name because you might find a scenario where you not you don't want to change the ID, you just want to change the name. So we're making it nullable in that we don't have to change everything when we want to update a specific object. And then we'll come here and say return task list ID ID and name ID id if an id is not passed this dot id and if name if name is not passed this dot name okay so we have errors here because we need to use a build runner to regenerate for us and create a generated dot file for us. So let's do that. I hope it makes sense, those three methods. But if you don't understand, I'll, I have a link that explains in detail um, what these three methods are all about and why they're important in data serializations. So we'll just define our generated file at the top. So we just say part list. It has to have the same name as the class that we are in. Let's annotate our class with a JSON serializable annotation. We'll find it in the JSON annotation uh, package that we installed. And now that we have that, let's try and run the build runner. build runner build wait uh, let's navigate to the correct um, dot run build runner build and it will generate for us our generated 
file here it is and it holds uh, the two main functions which is one is to json and the other one is from json and as you can see our error has is gone part of it <laughs> so just positioning this so it's here and then let's look at this copy with method there's something i have done wrong let's see um copy with it's supposed to look like that mm. copy with closing string id invalid location position this guy over here missing documentation copy with method so here's our class i think i'll take a quick walkthrough before now we create a repository class so we first uh we first created a data source which is an in-memory cache with data type map and it holds a string so a map is a key value pair so the key will be in form of a string which will be the id and the task list will be the task list object which we have designed over here which has two variables or two attributes the id and the name and then we extended the equitable so that in the point where we need to compare two task list objects it's much easier equitable helps with that and we overread uh, we had to override the specific getter method that it has so that it checks the id and the name so that's what we've done and also we've added an annotation visible for testing so that it's only for development purposes next we have focused on the data serialization so first thing we did we handled from json so we designed the function for that an arrow function and also we designed uh, to json mm, here it is and we specified that and then lastly copy with method and for them to actually after creating this we need to annotate our class with a json serializable which will generate a uh, create a generated file for us that holds the logic for those two mainly those two functions that we have created copy with does not need uh, the json serializable generator so that's all we have done now let's proceed to create our repository class our repository class will hold our main operations class task list repository great so that's a fast basic part so inside here we're going to create a number of functions it will just uh, handle the logic that of retrieving or storing data in our internal data source that we initialized over here called list db so what are some of the functions that we can create the first one will be to check in the internal data source for a list with a given id we can start with that so we'll name our function list by id that's a basic way of creating a function next we're going to specify does it have a parameter yes we're going to pass a parameter of string id because this is what we're going to use to check or to search in short this is more of a search functionality and then let's specify its data type so it will be future task list we're going to be using a sync and await that's why but what you expect it to return is a data type of task list we want to be to return as task list task list object with a specific id okay so let's just add the sync operator here and then inside here all we have to do is say return list db our data source and pick using the key which is id mm. great 
and the reason why we are adding nullable is that there's a probability that when we pass an id there's no task list with that specific id or there's no object with that specific id so that's why we're passing this great um next thing we're going to do is um get let's get all the lists from the data source to do that we are basically going to create a function name called get all lists and then we're going to specify what are we returning we're returning a map because it will be an, a collection of objects so a collection of task list objects so we're just going to define that string dynamic so remember whatever we have in our list uh, db is string task list but what we want to return is a string dynamic more or less a json object so this is where we're going to see how serialization works so we'll just pick a uh, forget all list uh, we don't need a parameter so inside here we're going to define a simple variable that will hold all our task list objects or in that will be serialized to json object so we'll just define it as formatted lists is equals to string dynamic next sorry it's a map next we're going to check if the list db if our data source is not empty then we're going to print are we going to get go through a loop through our list internal data source using for each i remember in the data basics we went through how to loop using the for using while for each is another method uh, so we're going to use a string id And inside here we're going to proceed to say create a variable called current list is equals to we are picking the list ID with the key ID list DB with the key ID so once we have this what we want to do is once we have the current list we want to format it so formatting it will be picking this current list dot to json simply as that because we already created this method at the top so we're just doing that but now what we want to do is pass it on the formatted lists so what will we just say formatted lists using id is equals to we're giving it the value of this so let's just remove this error that we're experiencing by casting adding a cast that just shows string key tax list value So we're just casting whatever is being handled inside here. So now we have uh, we have created we have gotten the current list based on a specific key because we're looping through the whole um, map. So we pick the uh, the value of a specific ID. We convert it to JSON. We inject it to this variable that we have created so that's what we're basically doing and then lastly once it's completed we'll just return the formatted lists as so since we don't need that so this is how to get all the list from the data source in the app we remember there's a place where we say get all tasks so this is what we're going to use to no this is get all list we're going to get all the list and display them properly in the home screen next we have creating a new list with a given name 
because all we need is a name. To do that, you basically create our function name will be create list. And then we're going to despecify the data type as string. Then we'll proceed to what we need as a parameter is a string name and then we'll proceed to now in creating a list remember we need to pass in the id and the name for the id we don't want to do it manually of course in basic database structures uh, ids can be auto incremented or you can also create a function of your own that automatically generates and that's what we're also going to do even though we're using an internal data source so what we're going to do we're going to create an extension so we, let's go back to our repository to our folder to a directory and we'll proceed to create it inside this lib folder we'll call it new file hash extension dot dot great so you may be asking what is a dot extension a dot extension is a method that just extends a functionality of a library or a class for example a string so uh, an example will be you find situations where you create a variable of string and then you say dot something dot pass dot so you find those are uh, the, the value or the function that the what is usually after the dot is what's called a method and it's usually defined or created within the it's within a library or a package within a, a, a framework so other than the ones that are usually created you can also create your own you can create your own extension uh, which will be a method that will be passed in specific in a specific class that you have so what we want to do we want to create a simple extension that um, encrypts uh, the string that we pass so once it encrypts that encrypted data is the one that we're actually going to use as our id so let me show you how so first we'll define an extension method called hash hash string extension and we need to define an extension method by passing the extension key first and then what we're going to what we're actually extending where we are actually extending the functionality to is on a string so we're going to just say string and then inside here we'll add a getter function and call it hash value that will return a string so this is how you do it it will return a string it will be a getter value and we'll call it hash value so it's going to return a string here so what we want to return here is a encrypted version of this string or a SHA-256 version of this string and to do that we need to go back to our new terminal and install the crypto package so we just say dot pub add crypto sorry wrong dot pub add crypto and once we have that that will hold one of the encryption uh, algorithms such as sha256 and then we just convert our string using utf8 dot encode this this just refers to whatever we're going to pass or inject this extension to and basically that's how you do it and uh, let's just add a comment here so add hash functionality to our string id sorry our string id wow <laughs> to our string id great uh, let's also add a value here comment here that returns the SHA-256 hash of this string great so now back to our project what we're going to do here is we're going to define a string id because when you're creating we have to pass the id and the name 
So we're just going to define a string and we're going to pick the name dot. So we need to import um, this hash extension. So to do that, we just say import Let's import it by saying hash value. It will be added over here. And then we pass in um, we enter it like that. So it's a method and that's all we have to do. So next thing we're going to do is let's just add a comment here. So it dynamically generates the ID. Next we're going to have uh, create our new task list object and pass our two parameters. So to do that we just define another variable final list is equals to task list and we pass in the ID and the name. So this name is what's passed here. This ID is what we have just created. And then we're going to add a new task list object to our data source. To do that, you just basically just pick the data source list DB, define the key which is ID is equals to list. And then we can return the ID as simple as that and um, yeah and we're done so um, so it's just the way when you create an ID it passes for you the ID of this new um, row or object that you have created that's what we've just done next we're going to perform the delete operation once you have understood the repository, how to create this for the list entity, for the items it will be fa quite fast because we're just going to copy whatever we have done in the list and just change the parameters that we need for specifically the items. Um, so let's perform the delete. So deletes the task list object with the given ID. Let me close this. So we're going to call our function delete list and then we're going to set it as void and then inside here we're going to what we need is a string id and inside here all we have to do is call the data source and remove using the key id and we're done so next thing let's handle update operation so we'll call our function update list. Well, let's remove this. So inside here, we're also going to have it void. Um, so what we need to update, we will just pass the to the ID and the name because we need the ID to look for this task list object and whatever we need to update definitely for a list will be a name. So we just say required string ID and required string name. Great. And then now we're going to pick our task list object from our data source using the ID. So we just say current list is equals to list DB ID. So we have picked it next we're going to check if it actually exists so we just say if current list is equals to null so it doesn't exist we just return an error so we'll turn a certain type of error of type future so let's just set this to future 
Mm -hmm. Then we're just going to say um, future dot error, and we're just going to give it an exception of list not found. Great. But if it does exist, we're going to pick final list, define a variable, and recreate our existing object. So the ID will be ID, but the name will be the new name that we're updating. If there's no change, we'll just, or there's no change or nothing has been passed, we just pick whatever was there initially. Or just remove it because already we have checked if it's equal to equal to null okay so um, once we have done that we just pick list db get the pick the i key which is id is equals to list or another way to do it will just to pass this here and then we just we don't need to create another variable again and there we have it so we have created the functions of the business logic which holds the four main crude operations in our task list repository let me add a comment here class for task list i hope it makes sense so whatever we've done in the class task task list repository we have just defined the main functions that we'll need the business logic per se and we've separated it from the other part of the application so this is a nice design pattern to use to actually organize your code now that we have this done all we have to do now is we can copy this and create for the items repository because it's quite the same the only difference is the parameters so just say new for the sake of the tutorial we'll just uh, copy but it will be advisable definitely to recreate one by one so that you don't make any mistakes so we'll just come here and say item first thing and then we're going to name our object task list item so there'll be an error because it doesn't exist so we define that and then our constructor we also have to name it properly And then we're going to have a few parameters on the task item. So we'll have ID. We'll also have the list ID. Before we do this, before we add it in the constructor, let's define them here. So we have the items ID, but we also need the I the I the, the list ID of where the item belongs to. Of where the item belongs so it will be final string list id and then we need the name which is the items name we also need the items description so just call it um final string description and lastly, we'll have the items status, which will be final bool status. Uh, great. So now let's um, add them here. So we'll have, um, no, not here. It will be in the constructor, sorry. So we'll have required this dot list id then required list uh this dot name then we'll have required this dot description and lastly we'll have required this dot status great and then now let's look at our from json first thing we need to change the class name to task item task item task item and let's also change uh this task item and this great 
so what we're going to do here task item from json json that's just as simple as it gets now for two also it will be just two json to json as simple as it gets then uh, we have copy with so for copy with we'll add the respective string in any variables so we'll have string list id then we have string description then we'll have string status oh bull sorry bull 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 status so let's pass this guys here so we'll have list id list id this dot list id list id then we'll have description description this dot description and then we'll have status status this dot status wait um now that we have that let's do our run our build runner such can generate for create for us our generated file so back to our terminal mm -hmm. so just come here just say dot run build runner build let's wait and see great so we have it generated over here and it has the basic code to do with to json and from json great now let's finish up so remember we have our repository here so this one will be called task item repository for the task item and we'll pick this define it here so we'll have if you want to pick uh, an item an item then we have get all the list from the data source so we want to get all items from the data source so we'll have this pass the task item and then get create a new item with a given name and other than the name we're going to be passing more information than that so what we're going to do um, going to come here and give an information in our create I hope you're changing the yep uh, item by ID uh, I hope let's change this the function name to create item we have task list task item so let's set here for create item we require a number of things we require string list id we require string description we require um, we require string status and with that we'll head over here and pass we're generating the id using the same extension extension uh, method or the ex yes the extension method so let's come here and create our task list item object by passing all the parameters so in our task item we have other than the id and the name we have the list id so we'll pass the list id and then we have the description pass the description and we have the status we pass the status well great so our list id let's rename this to item 
so we have item and there's something we need to change here the list db our data source should be called the item db so we'll have a few errors let's update that so item db and it return the id for delete task list item object it's very simple let's just change the function name so that we don't confuse ourselves when we're interacting with it outside the repository then update item so we require a number of things required um, string list id required description and required post status and then we change the name here so our current item we pick it we check if it actually exists item not found and then we come here and paste this we'll be using the task item and pass our respective parameters so we have the list id which will be the list id description which will be description and status which will be status and that's about it we have created the repository for the items quite fast because we already uh, worked on the list um, repository class and i hope it makes sense i hope you have seen the value of data serialization and not only that how to use a repository class or implement repository the repository pattern where you like uh, separate the business logic and then you will get to see how now we're going to interact with this repository classes so see you on the next one